we talked about what thermodynamics is, how we work with thermodynamics, what are the units that we work with, how we write units, what is the proper way to write them. And we also saw how to have a feel for units, right. For example, the length of this room is about 10 meters, right. The height of this room is about, again, it is about 10 meters, right. And, uh, oh, sorry, uh, the height of this room is about 3 meters. Um, the distance between your hostel and the um, academic block is approximately about 800 meters, right. And uh, you know what 1 kg is, right, 1 kilogram. And if you hold 1 kilogram at the end of your arm, the force that it applies on your palm is 10 newtons, right, 1 kg multiplied by g and that is 10 newtons, right. And 10 newtons when it is multiplied by an arm of 1 meter approximately gives you 10 newton meters, right. So that gives you an idea of what torque is, right. So it is important to have a feel for numbers. And it is important as engineers to have a feel for what a meter is, what a kilogram is, what one newton is, uh, what one ampere is, what it can do for you and so on. Uh, because these are not just units, these are just not just numbers, these are things that we work with every day. So, we should have an intuitive feel for what these numbers are. Because when you get an answer, you should know whether approximately is this answer feasible, is this answer even possible, right. And so, if you, for, for you to know that, you should have a feel for numbers. Otherwise, you will get uh, a, a, Pascal, a, a, a pressure which is, let us say, 100 Pascal and you will write the answer as 100 Pascal. But you know what 100 Pascal is? 100 Pascal is extreme vacuum, right. It means there is almost nothing there. It is 1000 times less, I mean, it is 1000th of the atmospheric pressure which means we cannot even live there, right. Um, so, it is that low of a pressure, right. So, that is why it is important to get, get a feel for units, right. Okay. Um, today, we are going to this lecture, we are going to talk about uh, something equally important, something very, very fundamental and that is uh, systems and control volumes. Now, when I actually talk about what a system is or what a control volume is, you will feel how is this fundamental? This is very, very simple, right? This is perhaps the simplest thing of all. It is just a box at the end of the day. You just draw a box, you call it a system, you call it a control volume. What is the big deal, right? And yet, this is the biggest deal sometimes. And um, you will not believe me when I say that many faculty candidates who come to IIT Gandhinagar after their PhDs or many times after their postdocs um, are not able to draw systems and control volumes correctly, okay. And, and that is because they think it is too trivial and they ignore it. And then it comes back and bites them, right. And so it is very important to understand what a system or a control volume is, right. And it is important to understand which control volume or which system to use when. And it is also important to understand once we draw a system or a control volume, what is inside the volume or the system and what is not inside the system or the volume, right. And it is very important to have that clarity, where is my boundary, what is inside and what is not inside, okay, right. So, what is a system? Uh, it is basically um, a well defined mass. So, it is basically it could be any shape, right. So, for example, uh, I could have a system like this, right and there is something inside. Let us say there is uh, 10 apples inside, right. So, I, I could have a system that includes those 10 apples. Now, what is important about this system is that these 10 apples remain 10 apples. The mass of a system does not change. So, no apples can be added to the system and no apples can be removed from the system. So, um, if you do that, then it no longer is a system. It becomes something else, which we will discuss later, right. So, it is a closed system.
it can be called a closed system or just a system right and what does this also have um, this is uh, as i said a fixed mass system and there's a boundary And the boundary separates the system from the surroundings. So this is the system, and this is the surroundings, right? So a well-defined boundary, right, separates the system from the surroundings. Now, what's the thickness of the boundary? How thick is the boundary? It's not. It's extremely small, negligible. We can right. Mathematically, it's it's infinitesimally thin, right? So it has zero thickness, and and yet it separates the system from the surroundings. Okay. Now you might think again, what, what's so? What's the big deal about this? Okay. So let's think about the human body, right? Let's think about the skin, for example. So, if you look at the skin, if you look under the skin, so that is the um, outer skin layer, perhaps there is a fat layer, um, perhaps uh, there is um, other things inside. So, let us say there is a muscle inside and there is a fat layer out on the in the middle and then there is um, the outer skin, right. And uh, let us say that you are trying to analyze energy transfer from uh, the um, from the skin to the outside. Right. And let us say that you take a, a system that looks like this. Right. Let us say that is your system. You call that your system. Um, so, and then uh, the same situation, let us say that you have another situation in which your system is that. Now, do you think physically, do you think the size of those two systems is different? No, look similar. It is the same. The size of those two systems is the same, but yet are those two systems different? Why are they different? In second one, you have not considered the outer layer like which is right. Uh, In this, the, the system boundary is such that the outer surface of the skin is inside the system boundary. In this, the system boundary is such that the outer skin, the outer surface of the skin is not inside the system boundary. So, what? So, what happens? So, what happens is that let us say you have the room or the air or something outside. Here, you have got to consider the heat transfer from the outer surface of the skin to whatever is outside right air you know room whatever other people here yes you've got to consider that but then it's only a different kind of heat transfer here if it's a solid this is a conductive heat transfer because this boundary is inside a solid here this boundary is actually in a fluid right so there it's a different kind of heat transfer Right. Those two heat transfer might ultimately be equal, but at the same time you must recognize that they are different in the sense that they do not include or include the outer surface of the skin. Similarly, let us say there is a blood vessel here, there is a blood flowing here. Right. I have got to consider here the heat transfer between the blood and the outer the inner surface of this whatever this muscle is. Right. Here I do not. Okay. It does not mean there is no heat transfer here, there can be heat transfer, but I do not need to worry about the temperature of the fluid that is flowing here to consider uh, this heat transfer. Right. So, I just need to consider the temperature of that surface there. Okay. So, similarly for example, if you have a rocket engine, this is how the nozzle of a rocket engine looks like. Right. This is a converging diverging nozzle. So, if I consider the system to be that is my system okay. and 
The other way is to consider my system to be the blue and the red systems although their sizes are exactly the same or perhaps almost the same they are very different their energy interactions the equations that i get when i write energy balances for those systems are very different right and so it's important to know how to draw the system boundary and once you've drawn the system boundary it's also important to know clearly what is inside and what is not inside okay and what happens is normally we think a problem is so easy that we do not draw the system boundary and we have something in mind as to what the system boundary is or what the system is but we write an equation for a system that we do not have in mind in other words we include some terms which we should not have included or we exclude some terms which we should have included in the first place right and because of this we make a mistake and this is done not just by undergraduate students this is done by almost everyone who does not follow the simple procedure that you first have to define the system before you solve a thermodynamic problem okay so it's very important to understand what systems uh, are what is inside and what is not inside now can a system change its volume yes it can so uh, for example i have let's say a cylinder and i have a piston that uh, basically traps some gas here let's say air right and let's say this piston is movable and that it can move inside the cylinder and yet it is trapping some gas inside right and uh, so i can consider this to be my system right why can i consider that to my be my system because its mass is fixed although the piston can move and its volume can change but its mass cannot change right so its boundary can move i can have a moving boundary that's okay that's allowed and uh, but its mass cannot change right i can have energy interactions i can heat it up i can cool it down i can uh, do other things to it right but i cannot change its mass and that's why it's a system i can also define my system in this way right and again um, if i do it uh, like the blue dashed line or if i do it like the red dashed line the analysis is very different sometimes the equations that i get are very different right and if i have one mixed up with the other in my head i am likely to do a mistake right and it's very important therefore to pay attention to how you draw the system um, you can draw a system any way you like any way any way any any system is allowed you can have any system you like but some systems help you to solve a problem if you choose systems um, that are you know for for which you don't know some of the terms then that will not help you solve the problem so choosing systems comes from practice but the 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 procedure or the attitude to first draw the system before solving a problem is very is is what is very important right you have a question okay so now what is a control volume a uh, control volume is a very commonly uh, seen thing in uh, in all thermodynamics so for example um many of you might have heard of fuel cells right um now there are different kinds of fuel cells but um, some of the most common type of fuel cell is that uh, a device which takes in hydrogen uh, and oxygen and it takes in hydrogen at the anode it takes in oxygen at the cathode and it converts the hydrogen and the oxygen to electricity so what you get is electricity
and you get some water out, right? And the overall reaction is H2 plus half O2 gives H2O plus energy. Now, if you just burn it, you get thermal energy, but if you use a fuel cell, you get electrical energy, right? You also get a little bit of thermal energy, but uh, but we'll come to that later, right? Now, um, obviously, this fuel cell, if I consider that as a system, I have hydrogen entering, I have oxygen entering, I have water leaving, right? So clearly, it cannot be a system, but I still can work with something called a control volume, which I will define in this manner. So, now if you look at the red dashed line, I have hydrogen entering, I have oxygen entering uh, at different places and not mixed up and I have water leave. So, I can have this and this is still uh, a system that I can work with, this is called a control volume. Now, a control volume, can the volume of a control volume change? Yes, it can change. right control volume has the ability to exchange mass so mass can enter a control volume leave a control volume whereas it cannot enter or leave a system right so simple any questions about this yes is the fundamental difference between a system and control volume just that mass can enter and leave that's all that's all the treatment will be very similar the laws are very similar and so, it is just that a system have is just a special case of a control volume. A control volume is a more general case, when you do not allow any mass to enter or mass to leave, it becomes a system, right. So, a system is nothing but a special case of a control volume. So, good question. Okay, we will stop here for today and we will continue tomorrow next class.